This episode is powered by Safety FM. This podcast is being sponsored by safetyconsultantblueprint.com. In this week's Safety Consultant Podcast, we're going to go over a listener question on how do you approach common problems in safety. We can all run into issues. Some issues we will discuss with friends and maybe family, but some items are so personal that we don't want to discuss with anyone and we just want to handle them ourselves. What issues am I talking about? I am talking about issues with credit. Imagine being able to work on your credit report from the comfort of your own home. No weird salesperson telling you to dispute everything. Just straightforward, no nonsense on what to do step-by-step to work on your credit report. This is not just a credit education service, but it's also a community of other like-minded individuals having the same struggles. For more information, go to issueswithcredit.com. The Issues with Credit community will be with you every step of the way. Issueswithcredit.com, a 13th hour solution venture. Welcome to the Safety Consultant Podcast. I am your host, Sheldon Primus. This is the podcast where I teach you the business of being a safety consultant. So welcome to episode 32. Can you believe we're in 32 already? That's just like crazy to me. And I'm happy. I've really been getting some very good responses to the show, and I'm glad that people are getting into it, finding it. That's a big thing. Uh, Half of the problem with podcasts is you have to be you know, you have to stick with it. You have to stay around. So keeping consistent is why podcasts sometimes do not be that are not successful because they don't actually think of it as a going concern. So every week I know I've got to record an episode for you guys. It's content, which is good because I'm adding more content that eventually I could use later on, but it's also information that's helping you right now. So the crux of this episode is coming from the Facebook group. If you go to www.facebook.com backslash groups, G-R-O-U-P-S backslash safety consultant, no S. So safety consultant, C-O-N-S-U-L-T-A-N-T. So safety consultant. And once you do that, it is a closed group. So you're going to have to, uh, there's three questions you need to answer regarding, it just helps me as the group moderator just to make sure it's not a bot trying to sign up. So you have to do these three questions generally related to, are you in the safety field? How long? And are you starting a safety consulting business? If not, when do you plan to start? And that's generally what the the questions are. So this group's growing pretty good. I've got, uh, I think we've got uh, like 1,100 people in this Facebook group, and it's global. So you'll see people from the Middle East, from Africa, from Central America, South America, North America. Uh, They're all over. And it's a great group for you to get involved in. So one of the group members, John Grundy. So John writes, uh, and my question in the group was, what would you like to see or hear in upcoming podcasts. So one of the ones I'm going to pick is John Grundy. So John says, maybe ways to train your thought process to approach common problems we all find with new ideas. So again, John's question was uh, to have a podcast based on ways to train your thought processes thought process, excuse me, to approach common problems we all find with new ideas. So that's a great idea and it has a couple of components to it. So first component is critical thinking. So your critical thinking categories and everything you've learned in your management courses is pretty much the same when you're owning your business. So first is the critical thinking component and then the component where Uh, you do get new ideas. So how do you think through those ideas to see if it's going to work? So that's how I'm decoding this two stage question. And again, let's well read the question for you guys. So you could think about it as I'm answering. He says maybe ways to train your thought process 
to approach common problems we all find with new ideas. All right, so that's what I'm going with. So thank you, John Grundy. Uh, me and John actually go back a little ways because uh, he used to be in the public sector in Florida as well as myself. And uh, I believe I've actually done service for John as a consultant in his uh, training services. So I'll really have to look into that. I can't remember for sure, but I, I'm pretty sure we've been hanging out in the same circles for a while. And he's actually a certified occupational safety specialist as well. So that's the group I teach for. If you want to get a hold of that, go to cost.net, C O S S.net, if you need a safety designation. And I don't know if they'll tell you my schedule, but. You know, I, I keep my schedule up, I guess, on SheldonPrimus.com. You can find me that way. And hopefully you can take a class I'm doing. All right, let's dissect this question. So first thing we're thinking about is critical thinking, right? So critical thinking was one of the courses I took when I was doing my, master, my master's degree in public administration. And I chose public administration because... I wanted to affect my community in such a way, that, and it was also, you know, a little bit of ego too, I can't lie, but I really wanted to be a utility director. That's what I was going for, and a path to utility director for someone that's not an engineer is probably better off as being uh, a public administration person, so that's what I did. Got my master's there. Part of it, it was critical thinking. And I took that course. I loved it. It was one of my favorite ones. I use it constantly. So I have no notes here. This is just me coming off my head as to how I would solve a problem first and foremost. And it'll actually be the answer to the second part of the question. How do you work your way through a new, a new issue or I should say a new solution just to make sure that that is the best one. So first and foremost, you got to identify the problem so you have to make sure that you're going to identify the problem in its true nature the depth the breadth the complexities the domino effects everything that goes into that situation you need to understand some root cause as well as all the other causes secondary tertiary uh, causes that may have been an effect to the situation you're looking at, to the hazard you're looking at, so that you will understand that even before you choose controls, once you get a good explanation, understanding, findings, results on real, deep, quantitative and qualitative examinations, then you can really understand the breadth of the issue, the breadth of the problem, first and foremost. So in hearing that, you're like, man, that's a lot. So how do you even get to that? So first, you're going to usually get what's called an incident investigation form. And in that form, it's going to tell you it's one person, maybe two people's point of view, sometimes three if you're getting like the group's point of view and everyone submits one of these forms to you. So you start there, you get an understanding of what they saw, because that's their perception. Then you have to go out to the field, you have to look and see uh, what the true assessment is from your experience, from your uh, SM, excuse me, SME, subject matter expert. And that doesn't have to be someone you pay out. It actually can be someone that's uh, your client's actual employees that are just that good that you could use them for your service. So if you can, talk to them, interview them. Interviewing is your best friend. You're going to use your interview techniques to get to the meat of what the person's saying and make sure that you disregard the things that can be or do have biases, but you still have to listen to them. So do your interview, assess the situation, look at O&M manuals from the manufacturer, Take detailed pictures from every angle you can. Have yourself and your team assess each angle for hazards and for variables that address or, uh, or areas that were contributors. Let's say it that way, a contributor to this issue. That's first and foremost to really understanding the situation so that you can start critically thinking. So then when you're looking at your critical thinking after you understand the situation, 
you're going to end up with a list of things and they're going to break down into two major categories. One is going to be leading indicator and one is going to be a lagging indicator. A leading indicator data is something where you could say um, we've had seven near miss reports or even seven good catch reports. We'll say it that way because a near miss something actually happened. So it's after the fact, the good catch is someone saw something amiss and said, let me formally write down what I see so that someone can address it in the future. Or I'll address it and I'll just write that I found this hazard and I took care of that hazard. So that's good. If you have that data, then you want to look at that data, really research that as best as you can. So the first part of everything is just research and getting a good understanding, making sure you understand all the variables, and that's going to call from detailed analysis. And the second thing you're going to do is after you get that analysis done, you're going to have to really use your team to start thinking about some of the solutions to that issue. So solutions, and I'm just thinking safety and health related. You could use this throughout the whole organization, but I'm focusing in on the safety and health aspect of it right now. So let's say that uh, the situation now that you've really understood it, you want to make sure that you're going to address concerns. So you're going to find each hazard, and then you're going to choose a control for that hazard, engineering, admin, PPE, or if you don't even want to have the hazard there, it's possible to remove the hazard or eliminate it in any way, substitute it, do that. And then when it's really, uh, well, first you should, you should think of those options prior to doing it. And so that's the other. You want to think of these options prior to doing it. And then you could really start researching. Well, if we, uh, let's say it's gas chlorine. And now you have a situation where you want to deal with, could we or should we switch to bleach with liquid chlorine? And then you'll have to really assess the situation, especially if someone just comes up with that idea, knee-jerk reaction. Let's say you had a chlorine leak and someone got gassed and it created a recordable event. And now everybody's on top of the chlorine situation, right? So we all got to take care of that. And then uh, someone will say, well, why don't we just go to liquid chlorine? And then we get removed from the process safety management program. We'll get removed from the risk management program. And we'll also have a product that's less hazardous than gas chlorine. And everyone's going to jump on the bag on a bandwagon, right? Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Gas chlorine sucks. <laughs> Maybe I should do a disclaimer for that one, right? I said sucks. Ooh. Maybe it's from all the time I've been doing the R, uh, rated R safety show. I uh, actually have been doing that recently so if you have a chance go to safety fm click on the rated r safety show look for the sheldon uh episodes so that leaked over to me so if someone is going to say let's go ahead and do that that change that's a new idea to them so now we're going to institute the critical thinking model to that new idea the critical thinking model is to really understand from the operators from everyone using that gas chlorine how effective is it? Uh, what kind of time do you have before the gas actually dissipates where it can't be potent anymore? And compare that to the bleach. Compare some of the other things, answers you're getting as you're starting to really interview this uh, scenario. Then you're going to get some factual data. You might end up having to call a manufacturer. You might end up having to get someone to do what's called jar testing for you where you could actually grab a process sample and you could also get whatever chemical you want to substitute. We'd run some uh, tests that are simulating the process and then you could actually see which chemical at what dosage works right. Well, first you're gonna do the jar test to find the chemical that you're gonna use. That's the substitution for something more hazardous. You're going to use something less. And then after you figure out, okay, uh, one milligram of the good stuff, the old hazardous stuff, is going to equal 0.5 effectiveness of the other stuff. So that means I'm going to end up having to buy more of the safer product. And I'm going to have to see if storage, handling, training on everything is equal. So that's how you would start thinking of critical, or I should say, 
instituting your critical thinking. And then towards the end of the process of the critical thinking side, you're going to really need to go ahead and do it because you will have uh, you will have your your mind set up as to yes this is the way this is what I've planned this is the committee we all got through this and then when you actually do it an operator or someone who is running the, the production or running the whatever it is they will say this isn't practical it's not working or over a period of time this thing becomes less and less effective and now you're going to have to figure out, all right, I didn't plan this quite right, or I didn't see this outcome. And then what you're going to do is you're going to reassess everything, get some new data, and then try it again. And if it doesn't work, do it again as far as your adjustment. Make another adjustment. And sometimes critical thinking is in action. So before you actually do your your action of whatever it is, you know, change your chlorine into uh, liquid versus gas, whatever it is. You want to do that analysis system, critical thinking analysis. Some people will also call it change analysis if you have an existing process and you're going to change it to something else, then the change analysis, and in some cases it's it's regulated that if you want to change a major component of your process that is going to affect safety and health and even could affect any outbreaks or some sort of uh, release or discharge, then you're going to have to do a change analysis. And that's really just critical thinking. That's all that change analysis is. You do critical, critical thinking and then you're going to put a plan in place as to how you're going to effectively go into the next cycle of whatever you're looking at so that's uh the nutshell of what we're talking about with the critical thinking side as well as the side where uh, you want to make sure that for your your duties as a safety and health professional you will utilize anybody that you can that is familiar with the scenario so that you can get everybody's point of view and that's going to help you with critical thinking. So uh, hopefully that's going to answer uh, the question that we got from John earlier. And I really believe that uh, once you train your mind into knowing that what you see isn't truly cut and dry, there's many layers and dimensions to that. And that all you know goes way back to single factor theory models and uh, everything else, the bird loft, the mark on them theories and Manuel's theories and James Reason's models. So you got to really look into those things to where you could kind of, um, uh, you have to educate yourself in order to understand different ways to do some of these critical thinking models and the, the, the approach. So new ideas, that was the uh, last half of the question was uh, when you do get any of these new ideas and you think it's the best thing next to sliced bread, you're going to end up having to do some sort of modeling just to make sure that you are right and it is going to hit its intended program or intended target. The whole system I just explained to you guys has been used in the ISO 45001. It's also been used in the OSAS 18001. And it's the plan, do, check, act system. Plan, meaning you get a good understanding of the full situation. You start planning out how you're going to counteract what you just uh, uh, did a full analysis on. And then you do it, the action. Find out if the action is hitting its intended target. That's your check part. And then the action, the plan, do, check, act. The last act is you're going to change things around, make a decision that, all right, this isn't going the right way, or we could do better. Kind of get that whole system all set up again as to uh, where you're going to uh, address, why you're addressing it, how you're addressing it, your communication plan to your people, uh, everybody who has to have, uh, they call it a RACI chart, which is uh, everyone's roles, who's, uh, who's responsible, who needs to be consulted. It's just a whole system, RACI, of making sure that you keep everyone in the loop. 
and you, you're thinking outside of yourself. So that's the key, right? So just remember critical thinking. Yes, you have to probably lead some of that, but most of it's going to be you're going to utilize all your resources at hand to make the right decision. When we come back, we will do our tip of the week. Do you want to be a safety consultant? Listen to Dr. Jay Allen of Safety FM give his experience after taking the Safety Consultant Blueprint course. I have actually done research on different consultants and looked at different consulting courses and so on. There is a pretty fancy, very expensive consulting course that is out there. I have actually purchased the consulting course, was interested in it. It has good information. Don't get me wrong. But you have a consulting course that really drives people onto focusing on safety and how to become a safety consultant. I will tell you on your particular course, there was better information in that particular regards than the other consulting course that was more of a generalist form. But I figured I felt like I got more information out of yours on you giving people direct path on what to do step by step. But I really think that you have a genuine good product there that can really assist people if they're interested in becoming a safety consultant. Register for the Safety Consultant Blueprint at www.safetyconsultantblueprint.com. Enter code PODCAST for a special discount. Welcome back. And before we get to the tip of the week, just want to thank everybody for listening to the podcast and just like to ask you if you can subscribe to the podcast, whatever podcasting service or system you're listening to, then go ahead and give us the subscribe button so you could hear whenever there's a new uh, podcast that comes out and you could share this. That'd be awesome if you do like it, if that's part of your system. I know all these different pod catchers have different ways of telling the shows that you like them. So whatever it is, you just go ahead and do that for us. And if you take it a step further and actually give me a comment, that would be awesome. I love those comments. And as I get them in, I'm going to start reading them on the air again. So please uh, help me out. That'd be a great way to thank me if you are actually listening to the podcast and you're getting some information from it and you wanted to say thanks. That'd be a wonderful way to to give me some thanks. Just go ahead and share, like, subscribe, and comment. All right, for the tip of the week. It kind of goes with what we were going through before, and that is how do you troubleshoot or critically think common problems? So the basics that I gave you in the episode was, you know, definitely fall back to that. However, I also want to just branch out a little bit more and say that you're going to probably eventually, let's say it that way, probably eventually have to really start thinking about giving yourself a budget and this budget is going to be for your self-improvement and your training so in order for you to get into the level of critical thinking and to be able to get yourself to the level where you could decode the true issues i would say you have to self-educate so if you're going to do that i would say the two things that you want to really focus on is uh, accident causation and investigation. Get a real good handle on that one. So if you could take a class like that, take one of the ocean numbered classes on that. They do have a safety and health class and they have other things. Get yourself one of those classes because that's really going to help you uh, open up your mind. There's some other services and private companies that do just that. So what you can do then is just really use that to help where you, now you can uh, get some other skills for just managing whatever the, the situation is. So that's one of the training. Make sure you get yourself. The other training that you should try to do is specific to whatever that is. So go to a train the trainer class if you have common knowledge on it. If not, then the other thing you should do is go and use that OSHA training education uh, centers. I used to be an adjunct instructor for one in Florida, but 
I do belong to Mid-South OTI, and that comes through the Alliance Safety Council, and that is in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, so I'll give them a shout out. So go ahead, look through the, the calendar, look through different courses that they have available, find one, and just go ahead and start taking that. It's going to help you with your CEU requirements for your certificates, but it's also one of the tools of the trade to make sure that you can have some sort of compliance or understanding, let's say, of compliance, understanding of uh, systems, and then also understanding of how to actually troubleshoot, critically think things through. So that's the that's the ace in the hole, especially for uh, some of these projects that we get involved in with client problems. You know, our license is on the line, our certificate, let's say, as well as uh, our reputation, which is even bigger. If you want to be a safety consultant for the long haul, your reputation's got to mean something to you. You got to do something to protect that reputation and to grow the reputation. So the secret ace in the hole for the tip of this week critical thinking yes you need it and the best way to get it is going to be also by self-education and uh so go ahead and think about that one i will see you next monday This podcast is being sponsored by safetyconsultantblueprint.com. This episode has been powered by Safety FM.